Thanks for checking out the show review video. So this is for the 2015 show Ash vs. Evil Dead, which originally aired on the Stars channel, but is now available for streaming on Netflix, which is where I watched it real quick, went through, and uh, I'm doing a review for it now. I had initially seen all of seasons one and two when it came out, and then watched a little bit of season three, and then... I meant to finish it, but then I just didn't, so when I was just going back to do this review, I just ran through all of it, so uh, it was a good time. And overall, I would say uh, it is worth it, because I'm not going to have any spoilers for this. I don't do spoilers for any of my show reviews, because if I did that, then I would basically be going like episode by episode in a way, and if it was one review, it would be like well over an hour probably, so it's just not worth doing that. So it is spoiler free, so you can get an idea of... Do you want to invest the time into the show? And I would say up front, if you like Ash, if you like the Evil Dead films, if you like that storyline, I think it's definitely worth it. There's more than enough fun and gore and gore gags that stay pretty fresh throughout um, to have a good time. I do think that, you know, season one is obviously the best and it kind of, you know, goes with the whole pattern that you would assume with shows, which is you know, diminishing returns as it goes on, but I still think it ended with season three in a good spot, and um, yeah, but I'll talk about that. So as I go through my notes, I'll do like the backstory stuff, but then as I'm going through it, it's based off of watching order, so I would just kind of like write down notes that I wanted to talk about as I was watching through it. So in the beginning, it'll be from season one, and in the end, it'll be from season three, so just so you know. This was directed by 11 different directors, uh, but Sam Raimi actually did the first episode, uh, and that one was also penned by he and Ivan Raimi. There were 23 different writers for the show overall over the three seasons, and um, each each season had 10 episodes, and they're a little around a half an hour long. Each episode is usually a little bit under, but some of them are a little over. Um, so yeah, 23 different directors for it. Uh, and then it, writer-producer Tom Speziali was kind of like the showrunner. Because the thing is, you know, people like Sam Raimi, they have a lot of things going on. So they don't stick with the show so much. They remain a producer on it, and they start the show, but then they step away and they kind of let other writers and directors take it over and keep it going. But I think they did a good job of kind of sticking with Raimi's voice throughout the film and what the character would do. So the writing, for the most part, was pretty good. Um, I did want to point out Tom Speziali had also worked on the Weird Science TV show, uh, Dead Like Me, Reaper, which I love. I think Reaper is an outstanding show, and if you have not seen Reaper, it only went two seasons, but it's really, really good. It's very funny. Um, if you like Ash vs. Evil Dead, you probably will like Reaper to some degree. Uh, he did Desperate Housewives, the show Chuck, which I didn't see but I know was very popular, The Leftovers, Castle Rock, and the newest one was Watchmen on HBO. So this guy has been around, knows what he's doing. Uh, Bruce Campbell is an executive producer on it once again. I think he was a produ producer, a regular producer on Army Darkness. Um, I had it in the review for that because I have a review for all the movies, except the remake at this point when I'm putting this out, but that will be coming as well. So I will have covered all Evil Dead stuff until the new Evil Dead, Evil Dead Rise, comes out, and then I'll take care of that one. So he retired, actually ended up retiring, sorry, retiring from playing Ash after the cancellation of the show, which came, I think, as the third season was going, is when they announced it would not be renewed again. The show actually initially, before it even showed the first episode of the first season, was renewed for a second season because of the kind of buzz that it was getting. And Stars ended up being the home for it, not just because it was like the only place that would take it. That wasn't the case. It was the only place that Sam Raimi and those involved really wanted to be because Stars was the only network that said, we won't place restrictions on the show. We won't say you can do this or you can't do that. Just like do whatever you want and you're free to go. So that that's why they chose Stars to go with because there weren't any restrictions. And when you watch the show, you can see that. It's a very much anything goes show with the humor and the gore and, um, you know, a lot of the go gross out stuff, but also like the potty humor and how crude it is, which, you know, that's the fun of it a lot of times. Um, they were not actually able to reference the events of the film Army of Darkness for the first season because of legal issues, 
But by the time they got around to doing season two, those legal issues had actually been figured out. So they were then able to reference Army of Darkness. So if you're watching it the first season and you're just like, why aren't they referencing Army of Darkness? But they're referencing other stuff. That's why. They legally could not. But then, you know, it gets referenced, not heavily, but it gets referenced after that. So, yeah. The way they end up embracing the older age of Ash is really fun immediately in season one and it's funny as well and it really does feel like they kind of pick up where they left off with this not only the story really even though it's like jumping well into the future because he's much older but the feel of it you know the the directorial aspect of it because Raimi did the first episode but then I also think they do a good job of kind of sticking with that with all the subsequent directors except there is a lot of kind of like the Raimi-esque, like really close-up stuff and like fast movement and, and that that's kind of left behind. But, you know, it, it's a different time, so I think it was appropriate that they didn't go back to that as much. There's a little bit of it, but not a whole lot. But um, the continuity of the directing and how it looks is good. Also with the writing and the way the characters are, uh, like their dialogue is, is, is pretty good. But... I love the kind of whole setup for it. I love, 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 love the first episode of the first season. It is so good. It just takes you right back to Evil Dead and what you love of it and what you love about Ash. And the first season in general, I just think, is really good. Um, big fan of that one. The lead up to the opening titles in the first, the opening title in the first episode is great because it's a mix of Ash's stupidity and a little push from the Necronomicon that starts the Deadite issues all over again. And obviously that's what spawns seasons one, two, and three. You got to get it going somewhere because when you pick up, he's just, you know, gone back to his normal life for a while, for a bunch of decades. So um, I like how they kind of have that set up that, it, that it's a mix. It's not just one thing. The comedy in it is more restrained than Army of Darkness, but it is actually plentiful. I think it kind of falls somewhere between the comedy in uh, Evil Dead 2 and Army of Darkness, which I honestly think is a sweet spot. For that reason, the way the character of Ash is and the comedy aspects of it and the gore and the gross outs and all that stuff, I kind of feel like all that stuff is at its best in the show Ash vs. Evil Dead. I know some people may not agree with that, and you're you know, free to make the comments down there about that. But I think those elements are really at their best in the show. And for that reason, I really do dig it and enjoy, enjoy it anytime I watch it. It's good to see the, the Deadites still having fun and messing around with people. That's something that's been throughout the series of films. So it's great that they have that continuity. You know, there's no change to that. And I love that. It is excellently gory. I've kind of said that, but it is very, very nice and gory, and they don't hold back at all, and they're very creative with keeping it fresh with the kills and the gore. So lots of ideas just keep coming out all the way through to the end of Season 3, and that's cool. Like, it keeps it fun, it keeps it fresh. There are a few issues, which I'll talk about a little bit later, but nothing, ter like, terrible, terrible. They do introduce new characters uh, to be involved in fighting evil uh, and they do end up working for the most part. Uh, it doesn't really seem forced. None of the characters that get brought into the show throughout the three seasons really feel that forced. But it, there is a mixture of characters that stick around for quite a while. There's uh, ones that stick around for like an episode or, or two. And then there are ones that are just there, you know, basically as, as kill fodder. Which, it, it's cool that, that it's that range because... You don't necessarily know when the character shows up which one they're going to be, basically. Some of them you can kind of guess because of, you know, how in-depth the character is or how interesting they are. But I just like that they're those different degrees of new characters. The music choices are excellent in this. I love it. It gets you really jazzed up. They also went and sp spent some real money in getting uh, songs that people know and are really fun with the scenes. I mean, they have like legit songs like Don't Stop Believing" by Journey. Uh, they had uh, Take On Me by Aha. I think that was in season three and the Journey one was in season two. But they do a bunch of that. They get like named songs that you know that you want to rock out to and they use them well. The music is matched very well in this, in this show. I love it. 
It's not all just fun, though, although there is plenty of that. There's actual interesting story. They do expand upon a bunch of things with the Necronomicon, with Ash and his backstory, with the other characters who end up showing up. So it's not just about, like, turn your brain off, stupid fun. It's just for kills and laughs, although all that stuff is fun. There is more story there for people who want that. So, And I don't think all that extra story stuff necessarily works. The introduction of a character named Ball in particular, I think, sucks. I, I didn't like the that character much at all. And a lot of the stuff having to do with Ball in Season 2, I don't like. And I think it's boring. That's the worst part, in my opinion. But I'll talk about that in a bit. Uh, there is a little bit of iffy acting from time to time. But for the most part, the acting's pretty solid. There's one... Um, well, there are a few actors who... In the beginning, they're a little bit shaky, but then you can tell they really get their legs as the show goes on, so that's nice. Um, season 1 ties back to the first two films pretty well, in my opinion. Like I said, you know, they couldn't reference Army of Darkness, but that gets taken care of later. Uh, Lucy Lawless ends up being in the show, and I think she's a really great actress. I really like her. She was good in Spartacus as well. I really loved her in that, and I really do enjoy her uh, acting. And the way she does things in Ash vs. Evil Dead. And Samara Weaving actually shows up at one point in this. And she's, I won't tell you if she's if she's just briefly there or longer, but Samara Weaving's in it. And I think it's really awesome to see her and stuff. And this was before she started becoming more of a name and getting into more films. Um, so that's cool. And obviously, because of Sam Raimi doing this, Ted Raimi is back in certain ways. In two ways, actually, Ted Raimi is back. And that's a lot, a lot of fun. I love his acting. I think it's fun, especially within the context of the Evil Dead storyline. Yeah, love it. Uh, it's nice to get more backstory on the book, book and Ash. It just expands the Evil Dead world. I kind of already talked about that. In Season 2, once the character of Ball, Ball is introduced, there's a substantial lull in the story. There are actually a few episodes that I did not like at all because they felt really slow. They felt kind of directionless. They really did start to feel like time wasters. Like they were just trying to meet the episode length, which it doesn't happen often in that show throughout the seasons. But when it ha hits like that, you know it. Like you really notice it because the rest of it is pretty well done. And so the fact that that's there at all is unfortunate, but... I've seen many, many shows that do it a lot more and a lot worse, so minor thing. The episodes that seem less interesting try to focus more on characters other than Ash. That's one of the other things to keep in mind. And for that reason, it kind of, it just put me in the situation where, like, when they started to try and focus on some of the other characters a little bit more, and I understand why you would do that, because, you know, if you're trying to build the story more and make it larger, you kind of have to do that. But, you know, for someone like me, I just want to Ash, I just want to see Ash kicking butt, and I just want to hear him being funny. Kicking butt and being funny. Like, that's all I want, really, out of the show. And story's good, but as long as Ash is still there. You know, when they're cutting away and doing sustained scenes with people who are not Ash Williams, I start to get kind of bored. I'm sorry. Uh, as season three goes on, there's a noticeable decrease in the comedic moments and the comedic dialogue. That's another big problem with it. And I wonder if, I don't know when it ended up getting canceled exactly. Uh, I don't know if it was canceled before season three aired or during it or after the fact, but it did seem like in season three, they were petering out more to a degree. Like I'd said in the beginning of this review, the whole diminishing returns situation definitely happens. And when you hit season three, the worst diminishing stuff is what I just said. There's less comedic moments and there's less comedic dialogue in comparison to the prior two seasons. And that becomes very noticeable to people, especially who are big fans of, you know, the Evil Dead story in general. So, and Ash as a character. So that starts to feel very unfortunate. And it just makes it, it, it gives you this feeling like they're trying to shift it more towards being more serious. And you're just like, hold on a minute. Like, that's not what this is. Especially not with how it was set up in season one and how it continued in season two. Let's not start to go down this road. It just kind of seems like some people were maybe a little bit tired of, of trying to come up with funny lines and funny situations. 
which I'm sure it's tough, but, you know, but that's the show. The scope of things actually get very large by the end of season three, and I think that's interesting. That's cool. I like how... Um, the thing is, with, with seasons one and two, they still keep things kind of small, uh, problem-wise. You know, like, they can be a much larger problem, but where they're showing it, they keep it relatively small, and that's what they do for, through one and two. So in three, the fact that they then open it up a lot more was an interesting idea, and I, I like that. It kept me interested. I thought it was cool. Um, yeah. Now, during season three, I was actually thinking that it was kind of a good place to be done because of, you know, things kind of petering out a little bit. But then they had the final episode, and the way that they ended it, I was just like, oh, my God, now I want more. Like, now I feel like I need to know what's what's coming. I mean, to a degree, I do think it was a good place to stop, and part of the reason being that they they bring it back to something in particular, the beginning of one of the other movies at the very end of the show. And that's cool. Like, I think that's a cool way to kind of wrap it up and be done with it. But it just got me excited at the end again. And I'm just like, let's go. Let's go. Let's continue the story. So then I was conflicted with it. And I'm like, ah, well, now I just want more. Even though I was just feeling like, okay, we can be done. This makes sense. Yeah. But as we know, well, hopefully as we all know, there's going to be another Evil Dead movie. So I'm even more excited for that because I'm assuming that there will be a lot more writing from Sam Raimi and direction from Sam Raimi, hopefully, and then we can, you know, get more of the really good stuff. So, anyway, overall, this is a fun time. I enjoy this show. Out of five stars, I'm gonna, uh, with half stars in play, I'm going to give it a very solid four-star rating. It's not perfect, but it is a lot of fun. It is good. Um, I quite enjoy it. I recommend it to uh, anyone who likes the Evil Dead stuff. But anyway, give me your feelings on it. Put some comments down there. Let's get nerdy about it and talk. Uh, like I said, I also am going to have a review of the remake coming out at some point. I have reviews already on my channel for all the movies, and it's in a playlist, which this will be there as well. So, But anyway, uh, thanks for checking this out. Do me a quick favor, though. Hit that subscribe button if you like any videos I do this video or any of the other ones, that's your best way to repay me. It literally takes you a second. It's very painless, and it really does mean a lot to me. I'm very appreciative whenever anyone subscribes because I get emails when that happens, and I get excited, and that helps you know keep me going. I really appreciate that. So if you've already done it, thank you, and if you're going to do it, thank you. And But make sure that you hit the notification bell as well because then you'll know when I'm putting up new reviews or live streaming or any of that stuff. But regardless, thanks for checking this out. And until next time, keep it brutal.